I'm here with Michael of the Halo Effect. They played Proc Power Day 2, and what a performance it was. Were you expecting that kind of reception at a Proc festival? We had no idea, and, and of course I've known about this festival for, for many, many, many years, and I've been wanting to go here, and it felt strange to you know, come here as a you know, like fucking death metal band. <laughs> and so we, we were expecting, I don't know, nothing or something different, but this was awesome. People were super cool, really responsive. They dug our stuff, and um, it was it was really incredible to see. So uh, I was amazed, um, and I didn't know this room. I didn't know this venue at all. And it's beautiful. The stage is awesome. The crowd is great. Uh, this was a great surprise and uh, a very very cool experience. I must say, when I look at the lineup for day two, you guys kind of felt like the oddball in there in terms of all the other bands and in yeah. terms of the festival itself. But when I saw the crowd, when I saw how packed the place was for you guys, it, 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 I mean, first of all, this festival makes every band feel like they are a headliner. And you guys definitely played a headlining set and the fans came out as you guys if you were the headliners of the day. And that to me is really important for any band, but I'm sure it gives you that special feeling when you hit the stage. Yeah, and that, that's what's great about you know you know festivals in Europe or wherever. But I think yeah, we 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 are used to that in Europe maybe, but we are, we didn't expect it at all here. So we were very possibly uh, positively surprised by by the reaction here, and it was yeah amazing. And then uh, yeah, and as I said on stage, like I had you know this idea of what this festival was, but it turned out to be something very very different in the best possible way. One thing I, I was thinking about when you guys hit the stage is that the demand from fans is, is so much for you guys that pretty soon you guys need another record because you don't have enough songs to play a set deep enough for all the craving fans out there to get their the Halo Effect fix. Yeah, the joke is that we're doing an old school set, you know, playing the first album in its entirety, like, you know, some bands do, but it's only because we only have one album. But, uh, but yeah, that's going to change, of course. Uh, we have uh, a new album ready to go uh, very soon. It's coming out next year. It's, it's going to be awesome. It, it is awesome already. Um, so it's just a matter of time. And the album's only been out for a year and a couple of weeks. Um, so it's, um, yeah, that's what we thought. Like so Sometimes we play some new songs, actually, from the, the upcoming album. When we play uh, at home in Europe. But um, we are uh, we are very much ready for you know like the, the next kind of step to to uh, to play more songs, to play like proper headline sets. This is your second run in North America. You guys did a run earlier in in May. You guys played the Milwaukee Metal Fest. You played in Toronto. You played a bunch of different yeah. shows. This is your second second leg of the tour, if you will. Yeah. Uh, are you surprised overall with the reception that the band has had on this side of uh, of the Atlantic? It's very cool, you know, like, and of course, like, you know, people know us, you know, from our, from our bands and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and it, it's really cool to see, like, how, how they respond to this new material. Um, and yeah, we, we, we basically came over for a Mex festival in Mexico and then for, for this. And then we did a show in LA two days ago. Um, so it's very encouraging to see that you know the crowd is there for us and they remember you know what what all these members have been up to and they respond well to this new music that we're making so it, it's it's very very encouraging we cannot wait to kind of yeah release more stuff and come back and, and do it properly when you guys do the first album you guys are just trying to have a good time you guys are all friends this, this is music that's been inside of you guys for a very long time but now the expectations are a little bit higher because now people got a taste of what the band is all about the first record was a huge success you guys had massive tours all over the place does that now force you guys to maybe not look at it as from from a fun angle but more like from hey this is work now we have to put a, a better record second time around maybe it is a little bit of more work but at the same time it's even more fun because now we know where we have each other, where we are going, and what we actually gonna like make us a band. Um, the first album was experimentation and trying to figure out like what are we gonna sound like, what sounds cool. So 
so the new stuff that we've been writing and the stuff that we've been recording has this kind of confidence where we go like, yeah, we, this is what we're going to sound like. This is what we're going to do. And, and I'm really hoping that, that that will be evident when, you know, when the album comes out and the, the songs come out. Because it, that's how it feels, you know. The first one was, yeah, let's see what happens. And now it's kind of like, let's focus on making the best possible album and also like makes the, make the most out of, you know, what we can make with this band. Of course, we're all busy with all different kinds of stuff, but we're going to make it happen anyway. I think it's going to be, um, I'm super excited. It's going to take a while, but once we get started, it's, yeah. It's you know, when you guys were getting ready for your signing section uh, session upstairs uh, for today at Prague Power, the security guy passed by here and he said, we have 300 people waiting in line. Mm -hmm. uh, that's crazy. I, I don't think any band so far across oh, okay. two days has had 300 people waiting. Yeah, it, it was, yeah, it was kind of crazy. They, they had to turn people down and, and also... Like, I was trying to be nice and take pictures of everyone and then someone said, like, oh, absolutely not, I'm like, just do that. Again. So, it's a luxury problem to have, of course, but, um, uh, but it's, it, it's cool. It was great to see so many fans come out and, uh, and of course, like, we didn't know, I mean, I've known about this festival for year, for forever, but I didn't know that there would be that many Death Note fans and that, that really warmed our hearts. Yeah, it, w it was insane. When, when you're playing a festival like this, do you take some time to check out some bands that perhaps you... you I know you're a music fan. I, I saw you when you were with Dark, Dark Tranquility in Toronto at the Amorphous Tour. And when Omnium Gatherum was on stage, when Moonspell was on stage, when Amorphous was on stage, you're coming into the crowd and you're just checking out the bands like anybody else. So when you're at a festival like this, do you take some time to check out maybe a band that you really loved and you haven't had a chance to see before? Yeah, I, 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 of course I tried to, and, and for me it was Vola today, like they played after us, and it's a Danish slash Swedish band, and I know the drummer, he played uh, on a project I worked with, and he's fucking fantastic, and, and I, I love the band, and that was my first time actually seeing them, so that was a huge bonus for me, to just uh, go off, stop sweating, have a beer, and then go out and see one of my favorite bands, so that was incredible and I wish I could stay because there's tons of fucking incredible bands at this festival so um, so yeah I always try to you know you don't always have the chance but I got to see you know we were in Mexico I got to see Autopsy I got to see uh, uh, Sacramento bands like that that I never get to see otherwise it, it's yeah I love that it's one of the perks so yeah. Last question for you. As the, the festival day comes to a close, uh, Beast in Black is performing uh, right now. They're closing off the night. Uh, what's next for you? Are you going to go home, play some video games, enjoy the family time? Like, what, what are you up to? No, it's all work. <laughs> I'm going home to work on the new DT album. And uh, yeah, up until Christmas. So that, that's going to be the main focus. We're going to do that. Um, and we're well on our way, and it's, it sounds fantastic already. So that, that's the main focus. And then after, after New Year's, uh, we're going to start like the promotional campaign for the Halo Effect album and for the DT album and all that stuff. So it's going to be busy. But main focus is uh, for me to go back and just like finish the DT album and make sure it's awesome. And it, it, it's very close to being awesome already. I said that was going to be the last question, but no, I, I, something else popped into my mind. Will, will we ever see a co-headlining tour with the Halo Effect and Dark Tranquility? I hope not, because that means double duty for me. That would be horrible. I, I did a festival where I played, you know, Saturday and hey, that's fine, but not same day. I, who wants to see that? I don't think that's yeah. a good idea. Too much, too much. Yeah. Too much of, too much of a good thing for us, but maybe, maybe not so much for you. No, no, I, I, I'd prefer not to. All right, man. Thank you very much for your time. You're always a pleasure to talk to. You're, you're absolutely one of the best guys in the business. So thank you for taking some time really last minute. Uh, I hope you're enjoying Atlanta. I hope you enjoy the festival and have a safe travel back home. We love it here. We love it here. Absolutely. This is amazing. And yeah, it's going to be nice to get home, but um, yeah, I love it here. Cheers.